I'll start the recording again. So now the next part is really to, um, before we go in even into the eighth dimension, we have to talk about, you know, eighth dimension, you're not connected to, you don't feel your body anymore. Like in the seven, you can still feel your body. Whereas if you really get into the eighth dimension, it's pure consciousness. In, so let me talk a little bit about what the eighth dimension is. So seventh dimension, in the seventh dimension, you have um, knowledge of all of your lifetimes, all of the parallel lifetimes, like all parts of you. You have, you have the access to all of those combined um, wisdom of all of that. That's why the, the level of energy is you know, next level. <laughs> so that's seven. So all of your soul. So you have access to your soul, not, not, not your soul in this dimension, but all dimensions, all different parallel life streams that your soul is having. You have access to that. So that's a lot already. So in the seventh dimension, um, when you are truly fully integrated into the seventh dimension, you you're pretty much um, you you don't know everything yet, but you know a lot. You have a lot of um, wisdom within you already. <clears throat> However, there's still something missing, and that is the eighth dimension. In the eighth dimension, you um, you don't just know information about your own soul. You have access to all the other souls, all of their combined knowledge as well. So that's the eighth dimension. So pretty much um, all all the the, um, all the, um, the information and knowledge, wisdom of the known universe is within the eighth dimension. So that's what's available in the eighth dimension. Um, however, it may be a little challenging if we go there with our current understanding because we are still, um, our what's relevant for us is still this dimension. So the, um, the information that we have access to in the eighth dimension, it's all knowledge. So whatever you want to know, you want to know, um, you know how the earth was created, it's there. All of those things is there. However, you may not be able to decipher um, how the information is being communicated to you. So that's why <clears throat> we have to do some homework before we actually go up to the eighth dimension. Like I, if I take you there, then yes, you will feel very transcendental. I think is probably a, a good word to describe how it feels, but you know, it's like <laughs> transcendental, <laughs> but you don't, you may not get, a, you may not, um, be consciously aware of the information that's being shared with you. That's why the next part is important, is we have to start to activate our own um, translator, I would say. Um, so that's that's really is our pineal gland. So let me just do a share screen to... Talk about that. Uh, let's go back. Oops. Hang on there. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I want not this. Uh, let me just grab that. Okay, good. This is the one. So this is the language of light. So there is actually a few things that we can do in order to activate our um, higher knowing within ourselves. So first thing is really to activate the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands. So um, 
let me just go with this one. Okay, so so these are the same same points, but only in a kind of more correlated. So the what is the, this point that we're talking about? This is connected to the hypothalamus. So left and right side hypothalamus. That is this um, point within, it's on our brow. So if you, um, so if you kind of use your fingers to touch your brow and you will find that at some point there's a dip that's on your brow. So that is the point. So you have to kind of find what, where that is for you. So for me, it's here. So on both sides, so those are the two points that's actually um, linked to the hypothalamus. And then third point is really the middle of your hairline. You will feel that there is a dot there. So middle, right in the middle. So those, those are the three points. And then there is the TE20, which is a meridian point. And the TE20 is, we were talking, like there are two sides, both right and left. We are doing the right side. So, so use your right finger. What you're looking for is the tip of your ears. So if you just search for the highest point of your ear and you just press towards your skull at that point, you're not pointing in your ear, but the skull, but it's right behind the highest point of your ear. That is the TE20. So four points together. When your fingers are on those four points, you just say activate and you activate those four points. Okay, so any questions about um, where those four points are? Yeah, so this is deep, right? And here, and then yeah. here. Yeah. Activate. And how do you find this point? So it's really in the middle. So if you kind of look your hairline, if you just, there, you see that dip here? Mm -hmm. You can just see, so that's the one. Okay. So it, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty much in the middle of your forehead, the middle of forehead. So it's middle of a forehead. So this, these three points kind of form a triangle, mm -hmm. form a triangle. So that's, it's called a triangle. Okay, so you just activate those four points. And then this is TE20 on the right side. That's the fourth point. So when you activate those, it kind of act, you're activating the, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland uh, with those points. And there's one more thing as well, is um, I need to do a share screen. So there's one more thing as well. So this is the, the pituitary gland is right here, this little thing here. And then the hypothalamus uh, left and right side, so we can't see the, the, the other side. And then the pineal gland is back here. So it's at the back. And because it is at the back and the hypothalamus is kind of there um, in the way. So that's why most of the time the energy does not um, travel so because the energy is coming in through your third eye which is like in the middle of your brow so when the energy comes in um, it's being blocked by the hypothalamus so how do we make sure that the energies um, that's coming in because when other people when other um entities, whether your guides or um, higher dimension um, um, communicating with you, they're coming through your third eye area. 
And because of the, the way that our hypothalamus is situated in the way where the pineal gland is at the back, so the information does not get to the pineal gland a lot of the time. So the way around this is actually <clears throat> when you have activated like all these four points, um, then what you do is you tilt your head back. Because when you tilt your head back, the eye, the, the information coming in, it hits your forehead. And when you tilt it back, it it's the light is able to get to the, the pineal gland much easier. So right now you probably won't feel much yet because we really need to um, do some breathing to quiet down. And then when we, we activate these um, points and tilt our head back, then you will feel the energy connect. And I just want to explain it first before we do it. So questions so far, do we know what we're doing? <laughs> yes, you know, questions? Interesting. <laughs> the, so this is a, this is a method that uh, Sifu Jane says taught us to, to start to activate our pineal gland because the pineal gland has been kind of blocked most of the time for, for most people anyways, um, unless you, if, you, if you do a lot of um, meditation and then, then yes, your, or if you um, drink the right kind of liquid, to decalcify your, your pineal gland, then your pineal gland will be more sensitive and receptive to the light information that's coming through. But for most people, we just need that extra bit of help. And, and that can be um, started by just tilting our head a little so that the, the information, the light that's coming in through, it can actually have a chance of getting through to the pineal gland. And, and um, when we start to practice like that for like more often than when we actually have the pineal gland being more activated more frequently, then at some point the pineal gland would be able to um, work in a much higher percentage, even without us doing that. However, it takes practice. So let's just actually do the, the practice now so that you can actually all feel it. Okay, so what, what are we practicing? Um, <clears throat> so, oops, wrong one. That's this one. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this one, yes. <laughs> so what we are doing is, um, so what we'll be going through is we activate 10. Frequency 10 is really to quiet the mind down. And then what we do is use our breath. So we breathe in from energy center eight, which is eight inches above our head. And we breathe in, take the energy all the way down to four inches below our perineum, which is each EC1. And on the out breath, we pull the energy back up from EC1 all the way to EC6, which is our third eye area. So what that does is when we intentionally send the energy on the out breath back to, not through EC8, but through to EC6, it actually starts to energize the, the third eye area. And when we do that for um, like 20, 25 breaths, we actually really energize our um, third eye area and we do the, and we start to put our fingers on the triangle, which is the three points plus TE20 and activate those points. And when we start to tilt our head backwards with intention to activate the pineal gland, 
then you can really start to feel that connection. So what to expect is because when you are activating your third eye area, so you would have your eyes closed, you will find that once all of this activate, that your third eye area, like even with your eyes closed, you will start to see that there is an area that is start to clear out. You would see it as um, <clears throat> like when you have your, your eyes closed, you may see dark or you may see some like darker color. But then once we do the breathing in, when we energize the, the third eye area, you'll see that you know, an area right around here will start to, you will start to see that this area, there's a little bit of glowing. It will start to glow. May not be glow in the sense of it turns to white light from that area. It may be just a lighter shade. Of, let's say if you see blue or you see green, dark green, then it will start, there will be an area of just a little bit lighter. You will feel that there is a difference. So you see that area starting to clear up in the middle of the forehead. And that's when you know that, yeah, that your um, third eye area is activated. And that's the eye area that you will receive information, um, you may see images, you may hear sound, it may be, um, I've heard kind of like, um, <clears throat> okay, you know, wind chimes, some a little bit like that. A little bit like that, but, but that's just for me. You may hear something a little different. It will be sound, but it's not music. It's not like you won't hear a symphony. Nothing like nothing as coherent as that. But you will hear. You you may. I'm not saying you would, but but either you see something or you hear something. So that means that your um pineal gland and, and all the rest of your brain is starting to work together to translate the information that's coming in through your third eye area. So um, when you hear music or if you see a, um, like an image, you may understand it or you may have no clue what that means. So if you have no clue, then all you have to do is just ask for clarification. What does that sound mean? Or what does that image mean? So ask for clarification. And, um, and you would get more clarification. So it depends on how um, you understand the information or not. Okay, so any questions before we go do that? Let's try that out. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Let's try it out then. <laughs> 